So after using GoPros for well over a decade, I've made the decision to switch from using GoPro over to Insta360, specifically their X3 model. And so through this video, I'm gonna talk through why I decided to make the decision, uh, you know, my, my history with GoPro, what my intended use case is, and then towards the end of the video, I'll also explain how I was able to pick up the X3 for, for less than $200. So jumping right in, my first GoPro was a Hero 3. It was a gift for my wife in 2012, just before I deployed to Afghanistan. And I was able to take it and put it through its paces, both through training, and then again, when I was deployed to Afghanistan through Masri Sharif, Kandahar, Bagram. And really what I was looking for was a robust little camera that I could carry with me everywhere. That was waterproof, that was ruggedized, um, and I wouldn't have to worry about pulling out a camera to capture some form of, of, of incident or situation. And so the, uh, the Hero 3 hit a lot of the high notes. I'm really glad that I had it with me, both in training and again while I was downrange. Um, you know, without it, there's several memories that I would not have been able to capture. That being said, some of the shortcomings of the Hero 3 was one, limited battery life, and then two, and this is really the running th theme for me and, and GoPros, is the inability to easily frame the shot. And so, especially with that Hero 3, there was no uh, LCD screen on the back. Still, I used it for a number of years thereafter, even when we moved to California. You know, I took it on a few motorcycle trips in 2015, and then thereafter, decided to upgrade to first the Hero 7, and then later, to the Hero 10 Black. And the stabilization on both these cameras, both the 7 and the 10, was huge. It was a huge step up from the Hero 3. Especially with the Hero 3 when I took it on the motorcycle trip, trying to uh, keep the, the shot steady was really complicated and had to take a lot of forethought. For me and my purposes, I really need an action camera that I can just set and forget and I really want something that can capture long form content. So I can either put up on a selfie stick, I can mount to a shoulder strap, and I don't have to be finagling where that shot is and making sure that it's dead on. With the Hero 7, I was able to capture some really cool footage of my eldest daughter learning how to ride a bike. And so the first time that she rode her bike unaided, and pedaled off into the distance, I was able to capture that from her point of, point of view. And that's really special. That's a really cool memory to have captured. Fast forward, however, to a few months ago, and with the Hero 10, we had a chance to go take a dirt bike riding class here in the Texas Hill Country, a little, little place called Little Speedsters. And I had the Hero 10 mounted to my helmet which made it very difficult to try and frame, right? I had two children that I was trying to tend to, make sure that they were listening to instructions, and I didn't have time or the ability to pull out my phone and make sure that I had that, that uh, frame set up perfectly. And so instead, uh, at least from that camera, from the Hero 10, I have a bunch of footage of four feet in front of me, which really frustrated me. And that's the theme of where GoPros have been fantastic in their form factor, in their ruggedness. The image stabilization on the Hero 10 is awesome. But I've lost a lot of really cool shots just because they weren't in frame. And so following a couple of the creators that I follow, listening into uh, Jev and Dovey, Tokyo Lens, Chris Abroad, and a few others, I started to put, get into my head the idea of getting a 360 camera. And so I've had this now for about two or three weeks and it's been exactly what I need it to be. We've taken it out on a bike riding trip, we've taken it out on a hike, and what's phenomenal is that in relatively the same quality of video, I'm able to capture both, say if I'm riding on the bike with my daughter in her kids ride shotgun setup, I'm able to capture the, the perspective of her riding on the bike, and then I'm able to capture the perspective of what she sees out in front of the bike. So I can capture both our experience and I can capture uh, what we're seeing, which is really cool. I can pull both shots out of that video and it gives me just so much more to work with. And then in addition, 
the fisheye uh, effect always kind of bugged me on the GoPro. It just, it, it felt like it was throwing things out of distortion. Whereas for whatever reason, coming off of a 360 cam, even though the, the field of view is similar, uh, it makes more sense to me as to why it'd be a fisheye because it's, it's, a, it's a sphere, right? The camera is capturing a spherical image. Uh, so I don't mind the fisheye lens effect as much. And, you know, as the cameras have progressed, I found that that, um, that fisheye effect has really been mitigated through the progression of different, uh, of different action cameras. Another issue that I had with the GoPro is overheating. So I wanted to use it as a handy cam to capture a couple of workshops and uh, fitness seminars that I had gone through. And I found that the, it could only record for so long before it started to overheat. And I haven't found that to be the issue with the 360. I just have to turn it on, give it a little bit of thought of where it's positioned. Um, and I know that the battery is going to last for more than an hour. And then it's super easy to swap out just with these two, these two tabs in the side. And then it's waterproof as is, which has been fantastic. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was able to pick up the Insta360 X3 for less than $200. And how I was able to do that was through REI. I was able to use my dividends from last year and then my 20% off coupon that came out in February, match those two up, and I was able to pick it up for under $200 out the door. I know that there are other options on the market as far as, you know, Amazon I think offers a 10% credit card, 10% back credit card. For me, I really like the accessibility of REI. I've been on a number of road trips and camping trips where as I've landed someplace, it's super easy to stop at the local REI within you know, 20 or 30 minutes of the airport, pick up fuel, pick up a few uh, items that I may have forgotten, like a headlamp or something similar. And then also pairing that with the return policy, it just, it's kept me as a long time member and a long time customer. So specifically last year, we picked up two mountain bikes, the kids ride shotgun for my toddler. And then we also picked up the auxiliary battery through REI, the EcoFlow battery uh, at REI for the, for the van conversion. And so all those combined along with a couple of other purchases, you know, 10% from that plus the 20% off, this was less than $200 for me out the door. So I appreciate you tuning in, letting me walk through why I've decided that the X3 fits my needs better than the Hero 10. Uh, the Hero 10 is not going to go anywhere, but it'll probably be relegated to alternative shots such as, uh, you know, on top of the vehicle or, or dash cam shots. But with that said, appreciate you tuning in and see you in the next video. What do you think, Rusty Dog? What do you think? Huh? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking mini bork thoughts? Huh, mini bork? Come here.